Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, GameStop starts selling Transformers action figures, Moss Toys shows off their Tyrant Throne, and we see an early prototype of Make Toys Cross Dimensions Galvatron. Today is Wednesday, August 22nd, 2018, and this is episode 291 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that has also experienced the most excruciating year. But we still seem to put out two shows a week. I'm your host, Daryl, a.k.a. the Cybertronian Beast, and I am joined by the excellent Transmissions team, Yusuf, better known as Yoshi. Yo, Daryl, you don't call me excellent enough. I don't think I called you excellent at all. And Jeremy, also known as Yakko. Hey, how you doing? Let's talk Transformers. Oh, I was going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The seats that... move around. You have to say what the seat says. That's true. Um, okay, so we uh, are, are missing our fearless leader, our dulcet-toned Donatrion bringer. Please come back, Mike. We miss He's... you. <laughs> Charles is on assignment. He is, but uh, he'll be back very soon. So we're going to go on without him. First up, we, uh, we're we lacking Donatrions this week. What the hell, guys? We, uh, we, we, we draw for a massive mega contest, and that's it? Everyone just up and leaves? I don't get it. This is ridiculous. So we have no new Donatrions this week, so I guess we're just going to have to run a new contest. We better, because we're below the number for declassified. We have to be over 100 at the end of the month i know so if somebody donates a hundred dollars for a month can they get the list of everybody that quit on us Ooh, that's interesting no. that's no. uh that's like some fucking like spy games kind of shit there i'll no, personally hand write so. it on paper and mail it <laughs> if they donate a hundred bucks up for a month would you bring back yoshi's list Ooh, sure. that's a that's a deep cut that is a deep cut that takes a lot of time do i have to bring it back indefinitely Yes. Or do I have to bring it back for as long as they're a $100 donator? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it for as long as they're a $100 donator. I can do fucking And personally four mail it out to them every week. Separate Ooh. envelopes, too. There's, Separate there's quite a few people on that list. I can't do that. No, that's, that's, that would be the deal. This is $100. I would mail it out to the $100 donator. Yeah, that's yeah of yeah. course. If Whatever there's multiple, they, if there's multiple, it has whoever, to be two. It has to be the. the I, I want there to be two now. I want yeah. you to have to repeat the fucking list twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fucking do it. I got twenty six bottles of ink here waiting to be used. Yeah. And make sure you you put a wax seal on the envelope. Fuck. <laughs> I just want Yoshi to do some fucking work. <laughs> hey, if, if if we get a hundred bucks, I get some say in how we're spending this money from now on. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I kind of glazed over it there, but yeah, it's, uh, it wasn't a joke. We are actually going to start a new contest here. This was tossed around last week as just like a kind of a, you know, what if we did this? But yeah, you know what? My, uh, my pitch to the guys went through, I begged and pleaded and it, uh, it's happening. First up, we are planning on having two prizes. We've only bought one. So we're only announcing one right now. The end of September, I think uh, will be when we draw it. So let me just check the old calendar here. We will be making the draw on, it'll probably be Wednesday. It'll, the show will be up Wednesday, the 26th of September. Whatever show number that is, I haven't worked it out yet. Uh, we are giving away some uh, reissued figures. So as of right now, we have the reissue Starscream. And uh, that is one of the prizes. That would be 296. Cool. All right. so. Episode 296, uh, the end of September, reissue Starscream is one of the prizes. We're expecting to only have two prizes, though, so uh, keep your ears open for what the next one will be. So that would be, you must be a Donatrium by by Friday the 21st? I mean Of September? Actually, make it the show that goes up on the 3rd, the 297 the third so you you must be a, a donatrion by the end of september make it nice and clean like we did with this last one. Oh, oh i got gotcha. you i got gotcha. you all right this is uh yeah this is not some uh 
something that we planned. So, <laughs> so now the the contest will be uh, will be ending at the end of September. The draw will be made on episode two ninety seven. Uh, that will be sep- uh, recorded October on September third. Yeah, recorded on September thirtieth. Released right. on October third. Uh, that's right. So, and uh, and yeah. So we'll have uh, it'll be for reissue Starscream and uh, likely something else uh, yet to be purchased. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Something really quick. I know this last contest was a year in the making. Uh, we didn't want to wait another long you know chunk of time. So we're gonna get in, get out, and be done with it. But yes, you do have to be a donatrion by the end of September. Uh, so if you got in on our contest and you just left like a sucker, you're going to have to get back in. Sorry, you got out too quick. Anyway, on with the show. Let's get into some toy news. All right, first up is me with some interesting stuff from uh, that I found on Facebook. This was from Diam Chalk's page, and it was... Uh, found on instagram by uh brian b-y-r-i-n and uh it's mastermind creations formatted line this is a 3d printed model of their soldurus magnum and it is their die atlas figure um it looks really cool um it's huge too it's really big so we've seen this before there was a there was a uh color render that we saw at TFCon Toronto, they did a uh, they showed a, a picture of it in the, the third party panel. So you do get to see what it will generally look like in color. Obviously, this was not picture or not real in the render, but it's uh, you know it's probably pretty close. So yeah, I, I think it looks pretty darn cool. Uh, Jeremy, uh, Die Atlas, it's uh, it's in the comics, but uh, you know he didn't last real long. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's a good-looking figure. The I wouldn't think that the audience for Diatlas would be as big as some of the other figures. I mean, unless you're big into the Japanese stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I know there there are the fans, uh, obviously, because they're doing this, but it's a good-looking figure, and, I mean, I'm assuming that that monitor is not a tiny monitor that we see him you know, no. next to. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he is going to be a big figure, my biggest concern about it is the the little spikes on his head. That looks really thin. Mm-hmm. I would be afraid of breaking that off in transformation. Right. But, I mean, a sword looks great in the render, not so much in the 3D print, but that, you know, I'm sure that it's going to look more like the render at the final version. I like the little thing that they're doing with the wings where the little things fold out. I'm guessing that's just for vehicle mode. Mm-hmm. Little tips fold out. That's a nice look. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm waiting to see it in color because the 3D printed, you're just looking at this big thing of white and you can't really make out much detail. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Diatlas is obviously, he is a figure from G1. He's a character that appeared in the Zone series. The figure itself is, um, I'm trying to to see here. I'm... I don't have it. It's uh, it's a very difficult figure to get your hands on, and uh, and it does cost a considerable amount of money to find a, a one in a decent shape. I think it's modular. I think it's two pieces that come together to create one, like a, a large robot. So kind of like a dual con, like uh, like Overlord. I'm trying to remember if it's two pieces or three pieces that come together. But that would be uh, Tri Atlas. <laughs> well done. I'll be here all week. Yeah. So no, I think it's just two though. But uh, but yeah, I'm I'm just trying to get a good look at the the uh, the toy here. It's an interesting figure. I do I do like it. Um, it's one of those ones that I've, I'd love to have. The white on him is a, is a pain in the ass to kind of you know kind of keep uh, white uh, over the years. But uh, oh, it looks like I'm just looking at it here. It looks like Die Atlas combines with two other figures to create a larger uh, a larger thing, which I can't remember the name of. It. I just pulled it up on. Um the TF wiki and looks like big powered is the name of the combined powered convoy. No, no big powered, big powered. All right. Well, that was, yeah, he was was Sonic bomber and road fire. Oh, the G one toy is not small either though. This is not G one. This is uh, mastermind creations. They've done a really good job on, uh, overlord. They've done a really good job on a lot of stuff based on the comics. Um, 
Yoshi, I know it's not, uh, you know, your comics is not your thing, but it is G1. This is very Japanese to go after Dialus. Um, is there any love for the character Dialus from you? No, I'm not. I'm not that well versed in the character. I will say I'm looking at the at the G1 toy and the the new renders that are that are coming out, and I I really dig everything about the G1 toy though. Oh, the G1 toy is cool. It's a yeah, brick, it's but it's gorgeous cool. though. I mean, it's yeah. colorful and it's it's just it's a wow. brick. <laughs> yeah, it's a brick. It's a giant. It's a giant brick. Yeah. <laughs> I would throw nothing less to my little brother at my little brother. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're they're cool. It's uh, it's just it's one of those things that you can't really. You expect uh, you expect a lot when you're like you're gonna spend seven hundred dollars on a toy and it's yeah it you know the legs are just one giant piece of plastic that you fold back on it. <laughs> it's like ah that's shit <laughs> but yeah no I'm I'm really looking forward to this thing it's really cool uh, Dialis is just one of those characters I know fans fans project came out with their their kind of Dialis looking figure it uh, it was kind of a play on. Uh, diaclone at the time as well so it was kind of a diaclone diatlas figure which was interesting enough but um wasn't exactly what i was looking for so i i, I did have it pre-ordered for a while but canceled so i'll be i'll be paying close eye, eye close eye on this one just because uh, i do like the uh the color palette of diatlas like yoshi was saying it is pretty cool but moving on uh, we found this just before the show and we wanted to make mention of something from TF Nation because it is happening as we're recording this uh, a lot of people are over there in uh, the UK at TF Nation the the convention itself has a uh, a really cool prototype on the floor make toys cross dimensions galvatron uh, has uh, the prototype for it has made its uh, appearance there there is uh, looks like two copies of it one in robot mode and one in alt mode um, the, we don't we really don't have a, a, a great photograph of it. Just one picture that shows both modes in it. And uh, I'm just, I, I'm liking watching the progression of this because the robot mode of this Galvatron is just amazing. It's so like, I don't know, apocalyptic. It it, it looks like the, the, the character is just, just going to tear your face off in not an Optimus Prime kind of way. It's it's just mean and nasty and just get the hell out of my way kind of way. It's I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I really it's want very to much it. the warrior um, Galvatron from the comics. Yeah. And, and I'm really interested in that. Yoshi, what's your take on this? It's a very sharp figure, you know, very a lot of pointing bits, not for kids. It doesn't look like G1. The canon mode actually kind of does. It's one of those characters that you're like, you kind of. You kind of tilt your head a bit, and you can see the G one aspect, but it's more of those more aspect of a, of like a a really cool fucking action figure. Yeah, no, it's you know you can take one look at this and see that a lot of love went into into creating it. For for those who who think like me and 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 are just old school like me, this is not something I'm ever going to grab. But I can appreciate the ingenuity that went into this because obviously there's a fuck ton. Like you said, the, the sharp bits everywhere, uh, just the transformation. It, it looks it looks interesting, and I can appreciate it for that. But I'm not like, ooh, I need to own this Galvatron. Mm-hmm. All right. And Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, I'm just – these things are out of my price range anyway. I, I enjoy looking at them. I think this it, – it looks amazing. It's just – this is not something that I'm collecting. Mm-hmm. But, man, you could – if you were holding this and someone got you in a dark alley, you could probably kill them by stabbing them with it. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I'd, I'd love to see the police report on something like that. <laughs> Killed with a transformer. And then Hatcher <laughs> would be like, nope, not we're cracking down all third parties now. <laughs> That's right. No, this is cool. I, I can't wait to see this thing progress through the rest of its stages until its final product. But I am, I'm very, very interested. But yeah, that's all I brought uh, today. Jeremy, what do you got? I have trademark news. Oh, amazing. <laughs> well, not really much to say here, but the Hasbro and DC Comics have settled about the Bumblebee trademark. Um, as a refresher, DC has a character named Bumblebee that actually started before Transformers, but they didn't do much with her. Um, she's in the Teen Titans, and then when Transformers came out, she wasn't really a big player, and now she is with the whole superhero girls thing that they're doing. And they put out a, a 
Bumblebee action figure, and Hasbro has the trademark right now on Bumblebee toys. They settled. There's no no public disclosure on what the terms were, but my guess is some money changed hands, and they're both going to get to put out the their own Bumblebee figures. And mm-hmm. I doubt someone go, that's looking for superhero girls Bumblebee is going to be looking at a yellow car and thinking it's the same character. So, or vice versa. Yeah, or vice versa. That's really all there is to say here. They, there is, you know, I doubt we're going to see more. It's just, we'll, we'll see what the products say. It might be some prefix. I would, I would guess on the DC side, like superhero girl Bumblebee or something like that. Like we have like Autobot Hound and... Could the outcome of this have been that, like, after this wave, DC, you can't put out any more Bumblebees? If it went to trial and DC lost. But we won't ever know what happened. Right. And because they settled, who knows? They came to some agreement. You know, if that if that if it leaked or it was somehow verified that something like that happened, then these little action figure girls would be worth something. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you stop seeing Bumblebee superhero girl figures on the store shelves, then yeah, that, something like that happened, but I really doubt that. I doubt it too, but it, you know, it could, you know, they also might want to avoid that from happening, regardless of what the outcome is. They might want that to avoid either figure becoming more valuable. They just don't want to talk. Well, I don't think they care about the value for like on the DC side. It's more that this is a, like it's, it's a character that gives representation to you know, African American girls, they get to see, you know, someone like them that's a superhero. And I can see DC wanting to keep that character in the limelight. And then, you know, Hasbro, they actually have the trademark right now. And they got this movie coming out, and Bumblebee is like their biggest selling character right now because they flood shelves. So you can see why both sides want to keep the product in the market. So I, I think, I don't think that we're going to not have one or the other in the market. Mm-hmm. So. DC is owned by, a, is it AT&T now that just bought Time Warner? Oh, God. So, I, I, you know, they're not hurting for money. So, But uh, moving on, I have one more thing. With the lack of Toys R Us now, you might be wondering where to get Studio Series figures. And it looks like GameStop is, or GameStop is going to have some. They will have Voyagers, Deluxes, and Leaders of, um, looks like everything except for Blackout is available for pre now. So GameStop is pretty much everywhere. I'm not sure if this also applies to EB games in Canada, but you have Toys R Us, so screw you. We have had Studio Series for quite some time at our EB games. Okay. Well, we, yes, uh, this is uh, this has been a, a point that uh, the E games have been getting Transformers for a while now, but we do have Toys R Us, so it hasn't really been news. Yeah. Well, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the price points are going to be in the new price points. Uh, deluxes are twenty two ninety nine, Voyagers are thirty four ninety nine, and Leaders are fifty four ninety nine. Yeah, uh, that's insane. But EB Games and GameStop do have like their their like Premier or Edge card in in Canada. It's called an Edge card for the EB Games. GameStop, I believe, has something similar where you can get like a membership mm-hmm. and you get discounts on the the shit you can buy there, right? I guess it's been years since I've walked into an EB game or a GameStop. So if if that's true, if it's true for GameStop as it is for EB games, then I would recommend people if you're going to if you now have GameStops and you're looking at them as your toy supplier, I would recommend getting something like that. Yeah, um, I was in an EB games I don't know a little while ago, and I saw that they had a Power of the Primes Predator King um, up there, and it was. Regular retail, so Canadian, it's two twenty nine, and yeah, well, it works out the same with with their uh, with their card, their membership card. It brings it down to like two oh six ninety nine, right? It's only fifteen dollars to get, so you're actually saving eight bucks by getting the card after paying it out. So, and then if you're gonna do this multiple times, like the whole the whole membership's only for a year or something, right? So. You can now yeah. get the regular, the discounted rate, and their their deluxes and their voyagers and whatever. They're they can be a little bit more expensive at their locations, 
um, in Canada. They also do have sales. They have sales and, and then all these other discounts and stuff, right? So the membership seems to pay for itself after a while if you're going to be there more often. Some game stops in the U.S., they're, they're starting a trial of comic um, sales as well. That's right. I think it's just DC and Marvel right now, but you know, they're, they're making their play to, to stay relevant as video games go more digital. So if you need your Funko pops or, or now your transformers, you can go there. So, uh, Yoshi, what about you? Um, you think you're going to go to a GameStop and check them out? You know, I did something recently that I kind of don't know why I did it, but I was, I was at GameStop and I pre-ordered red dead because I'm going to be in Chicago when it's released. And I just want to be able to come home, pick it up, and, and start installing it. I could have gone anywhere, and I just don't know why I went to GameStop to do it, but I did. I have absolutely no logical reason for that. I'm kind of fucking nuts. But I can, I you know, do these cards, Daryl? Do they give you a discount on new games too? I don't think so. Okay. But I think they, I think they get you. Uh, well, I can't speak for GameStop, right? But I know in Canada, sometimes if you're in, if you're a member, you can get like exclusive DLC and, uh, and other stuff like that. If you're, if you're a member. Yeah, it looks like the, it's called Power Up Rewards in the U.S. Um, oh, okay. And it's just a a points thing, and they have a catalog. Well, they got you know they they got a ton of shit in there. I mean, mine doesn't carry comics, at least not yet. But they've got their exclusive Funko Pop crap. They've got magazines <laughs> and used video games galore. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I want there to be a store that would be fun to go in. Like, and 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 do that but i don't i don't know i don't know i don't i don't know if comics is is what's gonna tip that over the edge for me again i'm still completely fucking baffled i pre-ordered i have no excuse i apologize you're weak i was weak Mm. (laughs) they didn't offer any dlc for pre-ordering it there no no they're you know they're so tied especially with rockstar as the developer they're so tied to what rockstar wants to do that they they can't say you know well we'll carry x if you do if you do some sort of exclusive thing for home rockstar i'll just say fuck you you can't sell our games <laughs> so well that is all i got yoshi what'd you get this week that's a good question um uh, mass toys moss toys uh these guys have a uh are showing off a prototype image of their g1 accurate detailed commander chair from the decepticon ship nemesis uh, and in our picture here, we've got the Masterpiece Megatron figure sitting in it. God, this thing looks sweet. Yeah, I don't know what to say other than, wow, I'm digging it. I like stuff like this. You know, I, I want I want more figures of, like, human characters or background sets or something like that I can incorporate in my Detolf. Uh, what do you think of it, Daryl? Oh, I love it. Um, they actually had this at TFCon Toronto um, as a prototype. Yeah. There's a uh, there's a little stand, you know the little uh, I don't know points that are on the back of the chair. Uh-huh. The uh, the stand actually fits into one of those ports, and uh, Laserbeak can perch on it. Masterpiece Laserbeak can perch on uh, on that. Oh, nice. So, you can per- so it's pretty cool that way. And there's some good weight to it. It's it's hollow on the bottom, so it's not like fucking heavy. Yeah. So it's it's the chair, from what I understand, um, from talking with the with the people over at the Maz Toys booth there, our, our good friends, uh, we had them on the show here, that the chairs are going to be about 30 bucks. It's not going to be very expensive. Yeah, it's it's just going to be like one piece. It's it's not like it's not, you know, assembled. It's it's come in that color. They may have a different color if you want it in like black or something. But um, it's uh, it's generally going to be that color. It's it's fairly light. But yeah, it's it looked good. It, You're it saying fits. thirty bucks, thirty bucks, yeah. Damn. Um, and it's uh, it's supposed to obviously. I mean, you can see that with Masterpiece Megatron in the chair, his yeah. um, his uh, his booty doesn't actually take up the entire seat of the chair. So this should fit um, all of the other Masterpiece scaled Megatrons, right? Mm-hmm. So and that was the point oh. is that it would actually fit everything that uh, that's coming out. And you can fit other figures in there as well, too. I'm a little hung up on something, Daryl. We're we're an adult podcast where we can say ass and butt <laughs> and rear end. And uh, I'm I'm why why did you g why did you g rate the booty thing? Because that that that's I'm I'm stuck on that now. It was funnier than ass. Hmm. Seems like a cop out, Jeremy. Do you agree? Yeah, but with the the age of my kid, booty seems to be the word that's settled around here a lot. I hate to tell you guys how I talk in front of Mike. But what do you think of this chair, Jeremy? Do you want it? I, yeah, I like it. 
I think it, it looks amazing. I mean, I it, I love some of the detail. Like, you know, students up in the, the front there. But to me, it looks like he has dual cassette decks. Like, you know, radio cassette decks like you would see in the car. And I yeah. just think that. I like to think that Megatron's just... He's like, sound wave, get, in, get over here. I want to listen to something. Mm-hmm. And sound wave pops out like a set. I am feeling like ABBA. <laughs> yeah. um, Ravage is like, not again. <laughs> look, since I'm selfish and I'm only thinking about me, uh, Daryl, do you think that this thing will be ready by Chicago? No. I don't know. I'd like uh, it to be. It looks like pre-orders look like are up. Nah, yeah, it doesn't look like there's maybe. much to it. Pre-order yeah. price is 35 so I was off by... Th- Five bucks. No, fuck it. You're fired. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. No, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm hunting for. I think this year is is an MP Megatron. Yeah, it says estimated to arrive November 2018 at Big Bad. So hmm. it, it might be possible. Someone might have it on the show floor. Sweet. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm game. I'll be looking. That and the fucking uh, what is it? Life size Optimus Prime arm cannon. I fucking want that thing so bad. <laughs> But I digress. That's it, uh, Daryl. Back to you. All right. All right. Well, then, uh, let us move on to trips to the store. All right. And that's this is the point of the show where we show off all the cool shit we got this week. And we make you all jealous that we bought shit that you can't find. Or we found stuff in our closets that you've been looking for forever. Right, Jeremy? Yep. Yeah. Off to trips to the store. Transmissions wouldn't be what it is today without the awesome support of our listeners. If you'd like to support our shows and enjoy the exclusive benefits that our donors get, please visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Yoshi, yeah. show us the brand new amazing thing that you bought this week that's going to blow us all away with the newness and the greatestness of it all. Okay. Uh, you put a lot of pressure on me. I know. Uh, you you know better than anybody. I can't live up to that. No matter how many rolls of duct tape I pull out right now. Well, I need I need some big some big stuff come from you because I I screwed up the beginning of the show. It's funny you said big because the uh, the impending new Transformers trading card game is a large big card. Uh, this is the San Diego Comic Con bullshit exclusive. I call bullshit exclusive because they offer it now on the Hasbro toy store. Fuck you, Hasbro. Uh, I'm a little mad about that, if you can't tell, uh, because I went out of my way to get some help to get this, only to find I could have ordered it on their fucking website afterwards. So good for the fans, bad for me. (laughs) Did you order some on the website anyway? No. No. I think they sold out really quick. Because I got this one. Why the fuck fuck would I order off the website? Like, I... Went out of my way. Thanks, Gabe. I went out of my way to get this, and, and... I, I didn't have to trouble people. I could have just waited. But this how, is how like two years in a row now. Do you have a regular playing card around? About the length of my penis. I don't know. <laughs> Do I have a regular card? Uh, Sorry about that. It's all right. Yeah, so is my <laughs> wife. <laughs> I don't have a regular playing card. I have here. Fuck. No, I don't even have that. Here's my phone. Okay. So. Size of a... Size of a piece of shit and iPhone. Okay, it's a good, it's a good and comparison. I don't think a BlackBerry user has any room to talk. <laughs> oh, I, I can talk. I'm pretty sure. Just anyway, judging by the lack you, of media you uploaded at TFCon, I, I would say that you don't have room to talk. But that's me. I, I can, uh, I can trash talk as much as I want. Uh, I'm the host of this episode. Um, <laughs> are you going to open tell. it? I'm I'm gonna it? do I'm gonna do it on camera. I'm gonna open it uh, when I get the because re- I bought like uh, a box of cards and the starter deck, and so so the big for me the big issue with this is you know there's at least one large ass card in here, and uh, in in talking with the Duggernaut because he and I are obsessed with this for some reason, uh, the large card one side is foiled of it. All the large cards has one side of foiled art. And apparently that's causing the cards to be fucking to bend after they're opened. So you kind of need to put the large cards in a top loader. And a little bit of research, you can kind of guess the size and get them off of Amazon. Um, So that's kind of a dick thing. 
But then apparently there are Mega Titans or Titan cards, which are even fucking larger. And there's nothing yet that I'm aware of for those. They're apparently they're coming out with the plastic sleeves, but if one side of those are hollow foil, they're gonna fucking bend too. You know, I kind of I kind of had an impulse buy when I when I pre-ordered the box and the and the starter set, but from some of the interviews I've I've been watching on YouTube from Wizards of the Coast, apparently this iteration is from Cyberverse. And that leaves open for uh, the next volume of cards to be from other generations of Transformers. So, in theory, in the future, we could get a G1 set where we're I, playing. I don't think they would go back to the G1 well. I mean, come on. They'll never do that. <laughs> when you talk, it, it knocks out Daryl, and that really fucks me up because I can't see any <laughs> shitty faces at me. But, uh, yeah, so so... I plan to open them all together at once just because I'm bored with, with the potential of a G one set coming out. Maybe for me, this isn't a complete fucking waste of money, but you know, from what I'm hearing about the cards bending, if you're like me and you, you order a box set, you're going to have to order a significant number of sleeves and cases to keep these things from getting screwed just inherently. So yeah, it says on the back, uh, you're getting two foil Transformers character cards. So that's two large cards and two battle cards. And I'm sure everybody has seen them. I mean, I think it's the same cards in all of them. Um, and if it wasn't, I would have gotten more than one. But, yeah. So that's uh, that's what I've got, uh, Daryl. That's neat. It's something that uh, nobody else has had and may not be getting. I'd, I'd be interested to know if uh, those will be available at Fan Expo. I'll have to find out. Apparently Hasbro has forgotten what exclusive means, so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> right on. Jeremy, uh, what do you got there, sir? I have a hat from a BotCon. I can't remember which one. I think 20... It's either 2011 or 2012, because I went to okay. one of those. But I also... In, in the closet, I found a, a toy that we had gotten for the kid that we haven't actually given to the kid yet. So I thought I would show it off, because it's Transformers... <laughs> It's a rescue bot. Um, it's an Optimus Prime with a car carrier, so kind of Ultra Magnus, but he's Optimus Prime. And it comes with who is this other character? It's not saying who the the race car is on here. Oh, oh, I was gonna blur. love the fact it's, that it, comes with a trailer. Yeah, it's blur. Yeah, so the kid's gonna love it when we actually do. I mean, this was a Toys R Us is going out of out of business you know, crazy deal. So I'm like, I'll pick it up and this might even be a Christmas present. He won't care. He's, you know, he's a kid. He's just, he likes having the toys and he already has an Optimus Prime that transforms almost exactly like this from the, the play school mm -hmm. transformers. So that's cool. And then I also, um, I tried to transform this before the show and I gave up much like I have, Many times over the last 12 to 15 years, and I've talked often about my 2001 R.I.D. Ultra Magnus in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> and Get the fuck out. <laughs> and this isn't all of them. Apparently, I'm missing some legs that are still in the plastic, another plastic bag. This is the most parts formery transformer I have ever owned. Like, the... This is the main component, and then you have his arms. Yep. <laughs> it, it, this is ridiculous, and I, I, I would not wish this toy on anyone, although I, a couple of years ago I did sell my other version of this, so I guess I did wish it on someone, but I got money. But anyway, um, the one thing I did like about these, I'll bring it back out and show you, I did like how they did the Autobot logos in this were kind of chrome and raised and mm -hmm. thought, thought that was neat. But you could hack together a wax seal, sir. <laughs> yeah, I just I like the idea of this toy. It's just the execution was horrible, but it does have rubber tires. <laughs> so, Success. Yeah. They all there. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're they're there and they aren't cracked. So cool. As far as I can tell, yeah. Well, so. if you want to bring them to TFCon Chicago, I'll put them together for you. Well, you said you haven't really played with one of those. I have previously. one. Previously. Oh, you do? 
Yeah, I have uh, I have Omega Prime. Okay, well, I, I might bring it so you can transform it, so I can just never transform it again. <laughs> there you go. But anyway, um, that is all I got this week. So how about cool. you, Daryl? All right. Well, um, I do actually have a uh, figure that uh, I picked up. It's a little G1 figure. It's not something that I really chased down. I just kind of fell into it. Um, this is uh, this is G1 Flame Feather, and uh, he's a interesting G1 figure as he's a uh, like a Sparkabot. There's not much to him. His uh, alt mode is on the back there. Really, he's like a. It's like a bird man with a giant dong. He's um, the most he's the most vicious of all the Transformers. <laughs> yes. He's the most excited of all the Transformers. Um, but uh, yeah, no. He's uh, his spark does work, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's I picked something him up. that they could not sell these days. No. So anyway, I picked him up. He was very cheap. Um, but I did come across uh, Power of the Prime's Sinner Twin uh, this week. So I picked him up as well. Um, very glary. That's cool, though. Um, so I still only need Blot and Cutthroat, and I'll have uh, all of the uh, Abominous guys. So, yeah, cool. I picked him up. Um, not opening him until I get all of the pieces, just in case. But I did want to show, just because it's uh, proof, uh, this is the prize. The G1 Starscream reissued. Did you buy one for yourself? No. No, I did and, not. And you know it's the new one because it comes with Megatron. It is the Megatron. Yep. And I found it kind of odd because if you look there, the um, – let me see here if I can get close. The 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 rear wings have the – like the both wings are attached there. The both rear wings are attached, which I found kind of odd. So, Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, if you look behind me, I don't know if you can see, but G1 Starscream is like right there in its box. So anyway, but yeah, you gotta love that, uh, that G1 art on the back. It looks great. So yeah, this is a prize and, uh, looking to pick up another prize to give away to. So end of September, become a Donatrion. And that's it. That's all I got. And we're back from trips to the store. And we're going to move on to convention news. In convention news this week, TFCon has announced that Aaron Archer, Transformers designer for many, many, many years, is going to be attending TFCon Chicago 2018. He was at Toronto, and um, I imagine he'll be doing a lot of the same things. He does signings, um, sketches. He does panels. I don't know if he's going to do. A, they didn't say if he was going to do a um, like a workshop like he has done in the past. But he also it says he's going to be doing conventions or going to be doing conventions. And if you haven't seen his art, he is a really good artist. So, you know, in DC, he had a he had some pre done uh, sketch covers and other art. The guy has just got an eye for stuff. His Ninja Turtles are crazy. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he's actually being sponsored by our friends at Toy Hacks. So cool. that's really cool. I only wish that Toy Hacks would come to TFCon Chicago. It's, they, they have, I don't think they've made the US TFCon yet. No, they haven't. And please. <laughs> and then uh, the other thing we have is uh, more information about the uh, panel at Fan Expo Canada that we talked about last week. The panel is going to be on Friday, August 31st at 10 a.m. in room 705 at Fan Expo. So if you're going to be there and you're going to be at the um, at the panel, please let us know. We'd like to talk with you, get your opinions, um, get your reaction. Unfortunately, Daryl is not going to be there that day. So mm, yes. we, you'll get to see the you know, their booth and, and their setup and stuff, but that's right. You won't get to see the panel. No. So that's a shame. Yeah. But I uh, also call in the, sick. <laughs> yeah. Also, this looks like it's going to be largely star Wars. Um, 
because it says join members of the Hasbro team as they discuss the popular Star Wars line and get an in-depth look at Hasbro's latest action figure offerings. Word on the hollow net is that there may be a few surprises. So I would say this is going to be mostly Star Wars. Hmm. And, you know, we might not actually get any Transformers. So we'll have to see. Um, But regardless, you'll be there to report on uh, the booth. And hopefully, if you're going to be there at the panel, let us know. That is everything we got to news. All right. Well, then let's move it on to feedback. So if you have any feedback for us, please head on over to transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback. There you can leave us a voicemail or an email or a Google Plus message. We will accept no. it. No Google Plus. What's wrong with Google Plus? Why you got to hate? I removed all links to Google Plus on our website. Ah. <laughs> oh. All right. So if you want to leave us a message on Facebook, who's been hacked multiple times, you can do that there too. And we will read it on the show and do our very best to answer your very important questions to us. We appreciate all of them. But this week, this week, somebody had the audacity, nay, had the balls to leave us a voicemail. And that's from one Dr. Pants. Jeremy, can you play Dr. Pants's voicemail for us? Hello, Transmissions Podcast. It's your friendly neighborhood doctor of pants here with, well, a question for you. I was rearranging a bit of my collection the other day and playing around with some of the uh, Transformers figures and transforming them back and forth as you do. And I started reminiscing about Titan's Return, how a lot of those figures were really, really fun, particularly like Blitzwing and Octone and Cup and how they were just so such a delight to transform back and forth and how much fun it was to mess around with them. And I started looking at my collection, all the other ones I really, really enjoyed, and I got to thinking if there were any uh, figures or characters I might have missed out on from any other lines, third party, main line, masterpiece, whatever, that were just fun to play around with that I didn't pick up because I don't like the character, I didn't hear anything about it. So I was wondering from you guys, which figure or figures do you think are the most fun to just transform back and forth and play with and just have some really cool engineering that you know, maybe most people don't know about. Again, could be third party, masterpiece, generations line, whatever. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you later. That is a great damn question. And I, I'm I'm excited to hear what Daryl's answer is to that. Well, um I I think that the animated toy line has is is literally just filled with gems. I remember buying my first piece of the animated toy line. It was on a vacation in Tampa. I bought uh, Voyager class Optimus Prime. Um, but uh, for a long time after that, I hadn't buy, I didn't buy anything from animated and then stumbled across a guy at a, at a toy show selling a lot of stuff. And he, I was able to buy, um, what was it? Uh, Leader Ultra Magnus. And he was complete. Not that he missed a lot. I mean, there was a hammer that really, that was a, that was all the only accessory he came with. But that figure, that Ultra Magnus figure is a giant figure. And it was just so fun to just move the chunky pieces around the big, huge ratchet joints. Um, it, it was great. Um, there are a number of other really fun figures in that line. Um, I remember the, uh, I think it was uh, what is his name? O- Oil. He's got the, he's got like the the Mister Freeze type head, but his name's like Oil Pan or something like that. Uh, but he's a motorcycle, and he's got the skull and the like the the ram horn skull for a for a handlebars. He's a really fun transformation, um, and because you never you can't really think of like where everything kind of goes when he's in his alt mode. But the best part about animated for me was how even throughout the transformation they maintained the look that they were in the show which was exceedingly difficult uh, because obviously keeping an animated style is hard to do with physical plastic but they did it and it was it was just so fun so i would say animated is is my um my favorite when it comes to that um there are a couple others um but as far as specific figures um, have to give me a minute to think about that. Um, there's, 
you know, I like R.I.D. Uh, Rail Racer. So the three trains uh, individually, they suck balls, but combined into Rail Racer, it's a magical fucking figure. Um, so so those figures are, are really great. How about uh, Jeremy? What do you think? Uh, R.I.D. 2001 Ultra Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I, that's why I want to torture myself. Um, I probably like the one figure I have like within arm's reach at any time is probably the Armada. Um, I can't remember if the size class was it basic or it's the little Bindi Prime. Mm-hmm. That's the one that I just you know always have within arm's reach to fiddle with, and you know he's like super posable. And it's just probably one of my favorites. And then I also have, let's see, I'm looking to see what else I keep around me. Uh, The recent Legends figures, I mean, I I tend to keep the smaller figures near near my desk because if I knock them over, it won't really hurt them. And... Uh, things like the, the recent sea spray, um, cosmos, those I'll, I'll just keep, I mean, all of those are, are fun to fiddle with and they're not too complicated. So I can like, you know, when I'm on a call or something for work, I can just have my hands busy with that and it won't really, you know, distract my attention from whatever we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yoshi, do you have any? You know, uh, I, you guys know I love that Cosmos action figure. I forget what line it's from. Generation. Generations. Generations. Yeah. That thing, I fucking love that thing. That I have transformed the living shit out of that. There, if there was paint on it to chip, I would have chipped it all away by now. Um, that is just my fiddle toy. I love that thing a lot. But I feel like it's worth mentioning that that G1 or Masterpiece Optimus Prime in alt mode, <laughs> I fucking love playing with that thing. Not so much transforming it, but just just playing it on the floor with my kid. I fucking love it. It's the rubber tires. Rubber tires. Rubber tires, absolutely. And I think that's it for feedback. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Pants, for your voicemail. That was awesome. Well done. And uh, you, too, can leave us a voicemail at transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback, and we'll be happy to play it on the show here. And that's all we got for feedback this week, Daryl. All right. Well, then that takes us to the end of the show. Um, thank you all for listening uh, and or watching the, the Trips to Store segment. Uh, you can uh, donate to us uh, on Patreon or PayPal, uh, visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, Stitcher, and or Google Play. Uh, Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We have a Discord, which is a lot of fun. We have a really good community in here, but uh, uh, people that just kind of come out, hang out, and chat. And You don't uh, have to support us on Patreon to use the Discord. No, it's a really fun place to just hang out and and talk with uh, other like-minded people. And uh, yeah. Uh, you can find uh, that at transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. And uh, please, like Yoshi said, send us feedback for the show at uh, feedback at transmissionspodcast.com. You can email it to us uh, directly there if you want as well. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening. Be on the lookout for our next show. It'll come up on Friday, and that will be Transmissions Alt Mode, where we will be uh, reviewing Unicron number two. Talk to you later. Bye. Night. Thanks for listening to Transmissions. Remember, you can help support the show by donating to us directly via Patreon or PayPal. Once you become a donor, you will receive access to donor-only goodies, like donor-only contests, listening to us record Transmissions live, and getting Transmissions swag at 20% off. You can find links for this at transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Subscribing to us on Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play is also a great way to support us here at Transmissions. Every subscription we get helps us get better noticed on those services. Leaving us a comment and five-star review doesn't hurt either. Be sure to come chat with us on Discord. You will find a link for Discord at transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. 
And of course, you can always send us an email at feedback at transmissionspodcast.com. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Dude, <laughs> the fuck was that? Oh, did you miss you that when it last week? Yeah, that was a surprise to us last week. Too. Jesus, it doesn't do it when you turn it off. Just that does not sound pleasant. <laughs> that sounds like recording and reluctance right there. We've been with you since the start. We were fucking beta. <laughs> I was like, we we couldn't take it anymore. It was either you or our, our editor, and we like our editor. Yeah. And, you know, I say that because Mike is going to listen to this part. So we love you, Mike. God, we so love Mike. I, I like Mike, too. Oh, I don't need to see the depressing numbers. Oh, you do. If I have to see it, you have to see it. Fuck. I want to see it. I live for depressing numbers. The fuck is this shit? Charles is here now? I thought he wasn't joining us. I don't see what? anybody. I don't see He's no, he just logged in. I don't. He's not. The top. Oh, see him in the doc. Means he's coming in. He's gonna. He's gonna check all our work. Fucking change everything. All right, Charles. Change everything. He's not in the dock yet, though. Don't we feel powerful with our three percent shares? Welcome to Transmissions Trips to the Store, where we show off all the Transformers stuff we got this week. I'm. This is the video. <laughs> yeah, this is the video part that uh, someone else usually does, and uh, you can uh, find us at uh, trans- transmissionspodcast.com dot uh, com and uh, listen to our show. It's a podcast. This is a video segment. Hey, yeah, we drink stuff <coughs> on the show. Coffee, ah. water. <laughs> mm-hmm. Once I finish this, I can then pee in it. Is it one for, she does not mode. Is is it a one to one ratio? Oh no! Is that <laughs> is, that would be that would be unhealthy. Um, so uh, Charles usually says a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I don't remember what he says. I don't give a care. Uh, I'm gonna transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Oh yeah, would like to support our show. We have two shows. Two shows. <laughs> Uh, one you're listening to right now is alt mode. No, it's not alt mode. This is the regular <laughs> show. For fuck's sake, Daryl. The other show that you would be listening to next week, next uh, the rest, uh, the end of the week is alt mode, and that's this thing. It's, yeah, this one, right? alt. Nope, that's screwing me up. Um, <laughs> you're gonna hurt yourself, Daryl. You need to stop. I'm gonna hurt myself. So anyway, let's just go on.